Yeah, another draft science video presentation. Hopefully a quick video. I'm just going to explain a photon. What a photon is, what I claim a photon is made of, and as few words as possible, really. Uh, mostly for Franklin Hu of the John Chappell uh, something or other society thing. Um, science chat. Um, I've attempted to communicate with Franklin in more direct ways, but it doesn't seem to work, so the only way I can do it is seen through this science chat thing. Uh, anyway, he um, responded to a video from like a year, two years ago, uh, now, which is bizarre. Um, so, um, and, um, you know, paraphrased my theory, and I think rather poorly paraphrased it, frankly. And so I'd like the opportunity to at least make clarification um, so to anybody who wishes to actually know what I actually say versus what he misparaphrased me to say. So anyway, um, all right, so we'll just get to it. Um, this should have added value in the sense I am doing subject videos, and uh, I suppose this is a good place to start. Uh, traditional photon is some kind of wavy thing in two different wavy fields. I say, nah, nonsense. Absolutely nothing to wave. It doesn't make any sense. Sorry, no sale. Um, I'm basically saying the universe is made out of two things, plus two things, uh, plus <laughs> two things. Um, two kinds of force, two kinds of matter, two kinds of interactions. Charge is two kinds of matter, protons and electrons, the two kinds of force electron reflective force and proton reflective force and the two kinds of interactions are uh, kind of straightforward reflection and uh, the incidence of a, uh, a perpendicular reflection something comes in at least perpendicular so two plus two plus two physics all right that's the basics so the argument is is the universe is only made of these two things force moving the speed of light so that would include gravity magnetism electricity all of this stuff moving the speed of light is in a class, and all this stuff matter. The protons and the electrons are moved by the force. They don't go anywhere until a force is moving them. And the force has to constantly move them. There's no um, momentum uh, without force interactions uh, for matter. So there's tons and tons of the force stuff. It's little tiny stuff, da 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 Say a million of these per every one electron and every one proton. Okay, so protons are like big air bubbles. The rest of the universe is little indestructible BBs that never stop moving. They just bounce, okay? They can push an electron for a proton for a while and then they bounce off and so that's the interaction part. So it only moves while the force is connected to it. Um, so magnetism is the force <coughs> when it's been filtered by a magnet. The force comes in in two colors, red and blue. It comes out, so it comes in purple, okay? Now we want to describe purple, and it comes out blue, electron force, and red, proton force. All right, so uh, <coughs> gravity is just the stuff in chaos, purple. And um, light is the specific incidence of this force stuff at a specific frequency. So bullets, all right? Light is not, a photon is not this. A photon is a composite object. It is made of parts. It needs to have length. It has to have more than one. Clearly you can't have a frequency without having more than one. Um, so a photon is made, it's a composite. It is not like a neutron, it's not just something in and of itself, it's something, okay, defined by a circumstance, and the circumstance is the frequency. The other circumstance is its polarization. So, and this is true for all electromagnetic radiation, all, everything in the spectrum at a frequency. So any quanta at a frequency is a type of electromagnetic radiation, that's what it's called, I'm arguing it has nothing to do with electromagnetic. It just has to do with the fact that you have momentum at a frequency. Little bits of stuff going the speed of light that when it hits an electron, it will cause it to move or cause it to stop moving if it's already moving. All right, and that's all it is. So it's force and matter. The force can come at a frequency. We call that a photon. The force comes mixed, you know, out of frequency, out of arrangement. We call that gravity. And if I segregate it for electron force and proton force, I have a magnet charge. <coughs> All right. So how it's done is the pretty simple argument. The radio antenna 
the length of the antenna is essentially necessary to, to um, when you're sending in your pulse, you're sending in a pulse of electricity, a pulse of electricity, a pulse of electricity. The electricity is going into the antenna, and what it's doing is it has to travel, that pulse travels up the antenna, and as it travels up the antenna, it releases, okay, photons, little quanta, little bits, okay, little bits are released. And it's released just by moving the electron, actually, but it doesn't, we don't, you don't need to know that part, what's jiggling. The point is, is the one that leaves here is there, and the next one leaves here, and the next one leaves here, and the next one leaves here. The polarization is the amount of time you have, okay, it takes time for the energy to go through the antenna. So if you have 250 megahertz, if you cut that down into a length, you can find out how much length that is. And you can say it's five meters or something. That's how long your antenna can be. If you have that long an antenna, you can use all of that antenna. Any longer won't be any good, okay? <laughs> but that length of antenna will be able to keep producing this sequence, okay? And that will be the antenna polarization. Okay, the antenna is essentially dictating the polarization of the energy. Now, I could send this much and you'd still get the frequency, but you're getting, you know, less than the maximum amount. The ray length will be a little bit shorter of the, the um, photon, um, what, it, what it will be called the photon. Uh, so, antenna polarization is a real thing. The energy comes out of an antenna. It has a specific... Um, a alignment that'll mean you can if you have your antennas facing the same way you'll get more energy than if you have one in your receiving antenna the opposite way so if your antenna is this way and you try to receive it with an antenna this way you're not going to do very well because all the energy going here you're not going to be getting any of it all right so all you got is the circular energy that's coming off of this spiral here you know and that's all you're going to get where you maximize how much energy you get if you're facing the antenna same is true for how this light thing works, except the, ed the uh, antenna is an atom, so the atoms, a row of atoms. So if you have a row of atoms and the electricity is traveling through them, you send a pulse of electricity, the atoms fire, and that's going to be your photon. And the photon will end up being the first one fired, and the next one fired, and the next one fired, and the next one fired. They're all fired in a sequence dictated by the time it takes electricity to travel through the atoms. So the distance, the frequency, is now going to be proportional to the uh, polarization. So in essence, the photon can be understood as being shaped something like an envelope. It's very thin, okay, in the fact that these are little tiny specks. The little tiny specks are in a space, okay, so one's here, one's here, one's here, one's here. You know, they're, they're sequenced across the envelope. So most of the photon would be empty space, just like most of an atom is thought to be empty space. But the point is the container that holds the photon, the frequency is proportional to the polarization. That is, if this is your polarization, your frequency would be like this. Okay, so the two are the same thing because they're both dependent on the speed of light, uh, essentially. The electricity is a little slower than the speed of light, but it's essentially the speed of light that dictates the sequence. So a photon traveling through space, whether it's a um, radio wave, whether it's a light wave, whatever kind of wave you want to call it, is not actually a wave. It's a bits, okay, that are moving parallel, little force bit, okay? So, you know, it's a bit of force, tiny, discrete quanta, like you call it a quanta of force, all right? And like a, an ether made out of quanta, you could say little bits, uh, except these ether particles are always moving. So they're always going somewhere. They're never stationary. They never stop moving. They just transfer their motion to different things and essentially get trapped in things. But anyway, the photon itself would just be, this would be your polarization, <coughs> okay? And this would be your frequency. Now, in the case of light, the frequency is average is 500 nanometers. Okay, which is basically 2,000 atoms. So the width, the frequency is 2,000 atoms long, which means this is 2,000 atoms long. Okay, that's pretty fat for a hunk of red light. It's a pretty wide distance. Now, it'd be pretty unrealistic to think a little tiny electron, which is a million times smaller than an atom, <laughs> the whole atom, could somehow collect all of this stuff on one single electron. Very unlikely.
So anyway, this has no th thickness. So just as flat as the blackboard, it all travels parallel. Each little bit is parallel, okay? <laughs> so they're not diverging. And the amount of them is kind of um, what's at issue. Um, it's, sa it's, it's stated that for our, our human eye to see it, you need six to nine of these quanta. Six to nine, they call them photons, but six to nine of them, somewhere in that range, you need that much energy for you to say, I saw a photon. If you're a frog, maybe it's, uh, you know, six to four, four to six. Um, anyway, it's a minimum. And that's really all it is, is a minimum. You need this minimum amount to create enough pressure on the receiving, okay, surface. Now, the trick is, is that blue light has, you know, if you look at blue light, blue light would be these little bits closer together. It would also be these little bits uh, not out of alignment as much. So if that was blue light, red light would look something like, you know, I'm making it bigger and I really shouldn't because that's cheating. The quantas are always the same. And the red light would look something like this. Okay, so the red light is further spaced. Uh, so you get less of it per time. Okay, but you're also hitting a much bigger surface with red light. The polarization is 2,000 atoms, where the blue light, the polarization is only 1,000 atoms. So there's a huge difference in terms of how much of the energy you can expect to land on the same number of atoms. And if the trick is for you to, to, for you to actually cause an electron event, what's actually going to happen is, is two of these pieces, two of these little quanta, actually have to hit an electron okay the same electron it hits it once moves it out of position okay there's a huge amount of tension it wants to go back to its proton so it's trying to go back but before it can go back you hit it again and that's what frees the electron so obviously electricity and all this stuff has to be more than one electron or involved in the production of it you have to hit numerous electrons out of their orbits and when you have enough then you cause the crystal to create electric current and that's what you receive as a pulse of light saying photon. But the photon wasn't just one event. It wasn't just one atom. It wasn't just one electron. Um, and the experiments verify that in the sense that they really don't have evidence of any. You can't send a bunch of photons and see an electron shadow. Electrons scatter the photon. That is, the photon comes in and the electron takes pieces of it, knocks pieces of it out. The two-slit experiment, I've explained in other videos, pieces of the photon are broken off, so you won't be able to see them as photons, but they're pieces. This clump gets through, but this one doesn't. This one gets scattered this way. These two get scattered this way. They get scattered to different places, and the places where you reconstruct the photon, that is, you put the back in phase, back in the proper frequency, those are the ones you see, and the ones that are out of frequency, the pieces, you don't see. Okay, and it's that simple. Um, so it's uh, completely consistent. Antennas and, you know, radio is the same thing. It's all just about electricity comes in, stimulates atoms, produces little bits of energy. And then when the frequency stops, there's no pulse. There's no energy. So that means there's a bunch of stuff, okay, in space. And then there's nothing. And then there's a bunch of stuff in space, and then there's nothing, and then there's a bunch of stuff in space, and then there's nothing. And that's the radio signal. Now, Franklin Hu brought up in this thing something about how he can send a square wave as a carrier. I use the word carrier because the carrier frequency in all of our radio applications are clearly there's a carrier frequency, and then there's the frequency on top of the carrier. Um, so if I was to send photons, actual energy, to a radio receiver with no music on it, no signal on it, just the frequency. You couldn't use an oscilloscope, you can see a square wave. I can't send a square wave with a carrier signal. I can put a, a square wave on the carrier, that is I can force the carrier to create the shape, okay, of a square wave. But the carrier signal, the main signal, the main megahertz signal that it's at or hertz or whatever, I can never make that into a square wave. All the um, oscilloscope ever receives is an on, and because it's tracing, it just makes a sine wave out of the the signal. The sine wave isn't something the <clears throat> that actually exists until the signal hits the material, starts to create electricity, and then can have varying amounts of electricity. But again, still, even it's just a pulse. It's a pulse of electricity. It's a little bunch 
of electricity, then nothing, then a pulse of electricity, then nothing, and the oscilloscope's just rounding off the corners. So there's no wave. In, the images on a oscilloscope are deceptive. That's just the simplest thing to say. The trace doesn't, it's like a heart monitor, it traces, okay? It's tracing. There isn't any signal here, okay? It's drawing one here, but there isn't one here. And there actually isn't anything here. There's on, and then there's an off, and then there's an on. And there's, no, you know, there's a positive ions, negative ions. The heart's creating positive ions, negative ions, positive ions, negative ions. There is no gradually on, gradually off. Uh, let's see what else. So the antenna idea works. Uh, radio's big antenna. Um, the antenna that creates a photon is 2,000 atoms on average in height. Okay, microwave three centimeters. It all fits. The polarization is consistent with the size of the antenna. That is, how fast can the energy get from point A to point B? And the fact is, is that once you've gone past the antenna length, you're not going to gain anything because this, any signal that gets there is going to get there too late. This pulse has already ended by the time it gets to this antenna, and that would be meaningless. So this is the only usable antenna is, you know, for microwaves, it's three centimeters. Make it longer, it's not going to do any good. Uh, radio, everything, the same idea. Add extra atoms here, and it's not going to do you any good if you're trying to create infrared radiation. This is all the space you can use. You can't use any more. You can always use less, though. So if I send the frequency even faster, then I cut the, you know, I just cut the, the, the pulse rate is faster, so the frequency is closer, and then the end of the signal, where the signal is restarting again, starts before you have, you know, uh, zeroed anything. So you can't, you can't use the extra space, even if you have it. Uh, so, the photon can be in any polarization in the sense that how it's created in the different crystals on whatever material is creating it. It just has to do with the alignment of the atoms, and it's always kind of a randomized material. So, you can create polarized light if you use the right material. You can create light that you know all comes out one way because there's a geometry in the material you're creating it by. Um, and how the electricity is applied to it could make a difference. <coughs> um, yeah, so... The, it's a, it's force, okay, it's the speed of force, not the speed of light. All the forces move the same speed, it's all made out of the same stuff. Um, so the, all there is is little tiny bits in the universe moving around all the time, all around us all the time. There's all these little tiny bits moving the speed of light, constantly going places. And you can make waves out of particles, that is, you can, you can incidentally line up your soldiers so they're all lined up and they all leave a certain location at the right time and they all march in a certain order and oh okay you can say it's a wave of soldiers but the wave isn't in any way connected the soldiers aren't in any way connected they're not tied to each other it's not a medium it's not a jello it's not spandex it's not a bent space it's not any of that crap these are all just individual particles and you circumstantially gave them the appearance of a wave but there is no wave because there's no medium these are all independent little bits of force there is nothing smaller than the force. The force all has independent tra trajectories. Um, I explain all this, how it affects gravity, how it creates uh, magnetism. These are all videos I've made, so I'm not going to go into those details. But all there is is the force, and the matter bits are like balloons. They're, they don't have any will of their own. They're just pushed by the wind. So whatever way the force is blowing is the way the balloon will go. So if there's more force coming one way, that's which way the balloon goes. Until you apply another force to stop it, it's going to keep going that way. And when you apply another force to stop it, then it stops, and then you can push it another way. And that's all the protons and electrons are, is balloons, and they have a property of charge, which, again, uh, I'll save for other videos. But that's all the universe is made out of. The photon is just force at a frequency. There's no waves. There's just bullets. You can fire a gun. Bang, 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 bang. Bang, bang, bang. You can fire a gun that way. The bullets will look like it's a wave of bullets, but there's no wave. <laughs> okay. So, till the next time and such. You couldn't fire them. Bang, 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 bang. Doesn't matter. That's the polarization. Which way the gun is moving when I'm firing them? They're all moving parallel. They're very thin, okay, but they have a wide polarization. That's a photon. That's my counter explanation for the phenomenon how particles perfectly satisfy the experimental results
in the following video.